So in this video, we're gonna go through a reaction energy diagram for just a really st simple, straightforward SN2 reaction. And we're gonna show how the energy of the system changes with time. So let's start with maybe the reaction of methyl iodide with the cyanide ion. And let's say it's balanced off with one equivalent of sodium as a counter ion. And as these two react, we're going to get CH, actually let's redraw it so that we show the bond, CH3C and C triple bond N as well as, let's just draw out Na plus and we're gonna have I minus as our leaving group. Okay, so this is the reaction we're, we're gonna talk about. And what we wanna describe in a reaction energy diagram is how the energy of the system changes with time. So we have our starting materials, we have, uh, and we also have a product here, and we wanna describe on a, on a curve how this energy is changing. So on the left hand, uh, Y axis here, we're talking about energy, and on the bottom here, this is the reaction progress. So how the energy is changing. So as we're going from starting material to products. So let's start over here, let's say, this is the energy of our starting material, and our starting materials are CH3I, and we have a CN, C triple bond, N, okay. And as we're, this is, when they're infinitely far apart in space, and as they start coming closer and closer together, what's still gonna start happening is we're going to have a partial bond between our carbon of our, nit of our cyanide and the carbon of our CH3I, we're gonna start breaking our carbon iodine bond. And it's gonna progress and progress and progress until we sort of reach a maximum. And this maximum is usually sometimes de defined by this special symbol, which the double dagger. And this is what we call a transition state. The transition state is the point of maximum energy. It is the highest energy of the system. And the amount of energy it takes to get to the transition state, we have a name for that too, that is abbreviated EA, but this is what's called activation energy. Activation energy. So we're going from starting material to product and the amount of energy it takes to do this is called the activation energy. Now we actually know what the transition state of the substitution reaction looks like. If you remember, in the SN2 reaction, this goes through what we call a backside attack. So the, night, the uh, cyanide is going to attack the CH3I from the, the side opposite where that iodine is. And in the process, we're gonna, again, start to form a carbon-carbon bond and start to break the carbon-iodine bond. We sort of form this five-membered uh, transition state where the carbon has five things sort of attached to it. Sort of because they're not full bonds. These are dashed, meaning that they are partial bonds. They are not quite full bonds. And because they're partial bonds, this is a very unstable system. This is why the energy of this is so high. And we shouldn't forget that there is a partial negative charge on the carbon of the nitrile, of the CN, and, uh, or cyanide ion, I keep calling it nitrile, and a partial negative charge on the iodine. And there's a partial positive charge on our carbon. Now, as we continue along, now the energy starts to go down a bit because we're going to become forming a more full uh, single bond between carbon and the CN here. And it's gonna keep going down in energy until it, it stabilizes. And this represents the formation of our product. So let's show formation of our product here. We have our tetrahedral, our carbon is happy to be tetrahedral again. It's, it's lower energy, we'll just draw it in C minus. And we also have I, I minus here. Okay, and that's, that is the energy of our, uh, our product. Now, we can actually from this figure out the energy overall for the reaction. So here, the, the reaction is actually lower in energy overall 
this is measured in delta G, is actually lower in energy than our starting material. So this reaction is actually thermodynamically favorable. This reaction is thermodynamically favorable. Now, this is all the information of the reaction energy diagram. And it tells you, like I said, where, what the activation energy of your reaction is, as well as the, the extent to which your reaction is favored thermodynamically. And as well, the most important thing is the position of the transition state. And notice for the SN2 reaction, this is a single step reaction. It goes through one step. So there's just one transition state for this reaction. So it goes through the transition state and then it's done.